Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, I'm not actually at the homestead. I'm in Andover, Kansas, which is a suburb of Wichita. We just picked up three hens. Hopefully they're hens. Uh, they're big enough to where you really should be able to tell and they do look like they're pullets, which means um, essentially a female that hasn't started laying eggs yet. It's called a pullet. And then if it's a rooster at this age, they'd be called a cockerel. So, uh, yeah, we just picked some up. Uh, the black and white one should be, and it looks like, a barred rock. The lady wasn't quite sure. I don't think it's a Midnight Moran. We've had those before, and I don't see any yellow on it. So, barred rock. The white one is a white leghorn. And then over there is a... Um, uh, dang it, I already forgot. A lavender orpington. So, that's what we got. wanted to talk a little bit about this idea... That I've been talking about lately of idealizing things because I feel like I you know each day that goes by I'm making progress with this this idea of like not idealizing your plans whether your plans are like really big and grandiose or whether they're just on the normal side and uh, it's really brought me a lot of inner peace and I don't want to start sounding like a hippie. Uh, I think that this is all gospel related. It, it's all about having your priorities straight and uh, treasuring, like saving up for yourself treasures in heaven rather than on earth. And so what I mean by that is um, what we talked about in my anger video, how it's like the more you idealize something, like the more you have like a... Uh, ideal way that things are going to go and the more rigidly and tightly you uh, hold on to that ideal the more frustration you're going to come across and uh, therefore experience anger because your your plans are get frustrated right and so the more grandiose meaning the more grand um spectacular your ideal is for yourself and for your life the more it's going to come in conflict with reality and in all likelihood uh the gospel and the commandments because well th that's a whole topic to itself but i realized that and i kind of touched on this in the dnc section one video where i think we can even idealize uh what we feel should be normal so what i mean is like for example you go on a drive you're going to work or you're driving somewhere and you kind of just like automatically assume or take on this attitude that you need to get there as quick as you can the most efficient way you know and so you picture for yourself ahead of time that your drive is going to go nice and smooth you know uh but then reality happens and you have traffic jams or you have people that maybe aren't driving the best and so therefore that's the reality that i mean you should probably expect that uh, based on your past experience driving but somehow uh, and i guess i can only talk for myself somehow i still expect everything just like to go great as i drive no problems at all point a to point b all green lights no people driving slow, no crazy people driving fast and cutting you off and stuff like that. And that just isn't reality. So even like with these like normal everyday things, I think you have to be careful with idealizing just everything going your way. Even if it doesn't seem like it's grandiose, you know, just going from here to work or going from here to the store. It's not a grandiose thing, but it's still like this idealized plan of how things are supposed to happen you know and if you again if you hold on really tightly to that that ideal then you're going to get upset when reality happens and you're stuck behind a slow driver and you can't pass them you know and so instead of just like i think the best thing to do is let go of the ideal allow reality to happen and we've talked about how god uh, works through reality he may intend for you to be behind a slow person because you know maybe something's going to happen maybe 
uh, you'll avoid an accident. Maybe maybe you'll um, see a sign, you know, as in like a heavenly sign that you would have missed if you were going fast. You know, any number of things. And so, if the more that you try and impose your will and try to enforce your ideal of what you think should be, the more you put yourself in the role of God and uh, cr- tr- like basically creating a world all of your own making. So, yeah, I, I, I guess I just want to say like it, it, it doesn't always have to be grandiose like you expect to become a millionaire or, you know, become the CEO of a company or own your own business or whatever, whatever your grandiose desires are. It doesn't always have to be grandiose. It can just be everyday life, you know, and it's especially bad when it's your, your family. If you have an idealization of what your children are supposed to be or your, your spouse and you have like an ideal of what you want them to be and you're always thinking about it and thinking about, oh, it'd be so nice if my family was like this. And then you try to enforce your inner idealization onto them. That is where uh, we start to have problems. And that's where, you know, we look to the church and in the gospel, it's not about force. It's about inviting and, um, uh, trying to be an example, you know, trying to win people over, but without manipulation and without force, you know, doing your best to speak to, to stick to God's ideal, which is the gospel and the things that we learn at church and in the scriptures that that's really the ideal that you should hold on to. And everything else is basically just worldly, you know, and there are worthy goals, And so I'm not saying that you should never like try and accomplish things you should, but we have to like remain flexible. So it's good, for example, to go to, go to school. Um, if you feel that it's right, you've prayed about it, go to school because, uh, try and become a doctor, you know, or a dentist that requires a lot of effort, you know, and by itself, it's not grandiose. And so you move in that direction And then if there's obstacles that start moving you away from that, uh, you know, you consult with the Lord, you pray, receive revelation, and maybe, you know, even though it wasn't your initial ideal, you do move away from that. Or if everything seems to be good and you're constantly counseling with the Lord and things are going right, then great. Then you become a doctor, you become a dentist or whatever. But I think that the thing that you have to be open to is uh changes in the plan in reality and maybe things that that maybe another plan that god has for you which requires you to start on a certain path but then you end up going down another one you know what i mean and some people don't do that they'll just they'll rigidly rigidly stick to an idea and it brings a lot of pain and suffering to themselves and to others too um potentially so Anyway, I, I just want to report again that I've really been like working on this. Uh, I've been doing it during this drive and how I've interacted with people, not expecting people to be my ideal of normal. So when somebody is just like obnoxious or whatever, like it's okay because they don't need to be my ideal. They'd let them be in reality, be themselves, have their agency, and then be flexible be as loving and kind as you possibly can be. And then, um, just kind of go from there, but don't be frustrated when you come across someone that, uh, upsets you for some reason. So anyway, I can't wait to get these three home, introduce them to the flock. Uh, we've lost a couple hens, uh, I think because of the, because of, uh, this raccoon that's shown up on our property. And, um, I think our setup is still good. We just have to like really be on top of closing the chicken coop before it gets dark. And, um, we've, you know, recently we've had some storms. We haven't been able to close it until after it was dark because of lightning. And that was one of the times that we lost a couple chickens. Um, other times I'm not so sure. I think it may have just been our fault, not 
closing it in time. Uh, or, I don't know, I can only assume. But anyway, yeah, now we're going to have a little bit more diversity. I was hoping to get an Americana. They're the type of hen that lay... Uh, they're, they're called Easter Eggers. That's like another name for Americanas. They're Easter Eggers because they lay usually like blue or green eggs. Uh, these ones, no. Um, I can't quite remember. I think the Bard Rock would is going to lay something like brown or pinkish eggs. Honey, do you remember what she said about the leghorn? And... The leghorn lays white. Oh, and so they we're, lay for, for, so, a lot of eggs. So for the first time, we're going to get white eggs with the leghorn. What about the lavender no, no orpington? Idea. I'm guessing they lay like the regular orpington. It's okay. It looks well, fine. <laughs> I, guess it I, I have it at a flattering angle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess the, the lavender orpingtons probably lay like the regular buff orpingtons. So I'm guessing like a pinkish, orangish egg. And the barred rocks, we've had them before, right? Don't they lay yeah. like a... I think I think it's like a brownish, like a light brown yeah. egg. I can't remember. Yeah, Here, I need to turn the car on because it's starting it's to get. Really yeah. Well, this is a good time to. It's a good point to. How is everybody? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I was talking to them about idealizations and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, but I'm going to end it here. So um, that's going to be it for this one. If you guys haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later.